I'm Rosie. And I'm Jim. And this is Cruising Sea Venture. Welcome to Episode 5. This is our last full week at the co-op. If you haven't seen Episodes 1 through 4, that'll help you get caught up. For now, this is our updated budget. And uh, let's see what happens this week. Here, Rosie's getting one of the first of the final two coats on the ceiling panels. And yes. I know we've gone over it a couple times, but we're going to do it one last time. And sorry if it's like too much detail, just let us know if it is. But we've learned so much. So we did a coat on the back, a aluminum oxide coat on the coat on the edge, and then we did two coats on the front. And then I knew we needed to sand it after that. And I, we both thought that would be like a light sand 220 before you do top coats. But we were quickly co corrected by the painters here, the experts, who said, no, no, this sand is with a 120 grit and you're almost gonna sand your paint away. And it works more like those first two coats like a sealer. And I know you can't feel it on the video, but if you did, it would, uh, it feels like glass, actually. So now Rosie's doing the top coat. The, coat. the never ending ceiling panel paint project continues. Never ending. Exactly. Never ending. But now we're getting very close. It's getting a final 320 hand sand with the grain, and then it's going to get a final coat of paint, and this project will be done. So hopefully, these will all get painted today and ready to install in the next day or two. We're working on the ceiling here, putting the insulated foam panels back up. We're reusing as many of them as we can that were here before. They were just glued up, sort of, and, and they just kind of fell apart and fell down as we tucked the ceiling down before. So, um, and everyone here said they have polystyrene to glue it is kind of difficult. So what we've done is we've epoxied these little tabs up to the ceiling so we can put these ceiling panels back that up go there. where they go. This one goes, it goes here. Yes. We can put these little ceiling panels where they go. They just push up through those little needles. And then these guys push on and, it and they're locked in place. And we're not relying on some glue. Meanwhile, the ceiling panels go up. Yay! Yeah, finally, with the holes cut out for the lights. So soon we'll see those as well. Half the new ceiling is up and the center pole is now going in. That's the next step. So there's our finished stainless steel pole. And then once it's installed with the new lights, we'll work on finishing installation of the rest of the new ceiling. Part of the salon ceiling project is to sand and re-varnish all the trim wood that goes across the middle on the ceiling. So Rosie's doing that. I wanted to talk a little bit about Sea Venture's bottom paint. So she's been sanded. They're ready to start painting tomorrow. She's going to get two coats of Trinidad Pro uh, black bottom paint. We're going to change the color to black. So looking at her, she has not been bottom painted in seven years. And, and uh, her bottom was in pretty good shape. Uh, it saved us a bunch of money as a result. They only had to do really a light sanding. Um, to have her ready to go. Uh, and I wanted to just talk about that briefly. The bottom paint we're using, uh, the Trinidad Pro, is not the least expensive. It's about $240 per gallon. Takes four gallons to do two coats. Uh, but I think it's worth it. It can last a long time. And uh, again, we've had Chris Parrish, our phenomenal diver, uh, clean the bottom of the boat every three months with it in the water. And that's uh, proven to be a very effective and I thought the first coat of new black bottom paint is going on.
that Rosie's doing the last coat of varnish, at least the last coat we're gonna do on this brow pilot house window project, just trying to get all this uh, protected until we have time to do more. Not sure when that'll be, but we ended up with, uh, I think, uh, one sealer coat and three additional coats of varnish. And I know ideally you probably want to do a bunch more, but you know, it is what it is. So, looks good, the wood's protected. Time to wrap it up and move on. So Rosie's putting on the final coat while I'm demasking. Uh, this was one of those little projects Rosie and I added to the project. Really no added cost. I think we combined had about 10 or 12 hours invested. So not too bad, all done. All right, we're getting ready to finish the rub rail project. And if you recall, when we picked up the stainless steel rub rails from Railmakers Northwest, they told us there, don't put them back with 306 stainless steel screws. That leaves little rust streaks. Go back with 316 stainless steel screws. Found out the local hardware store, even the marine supply store, that's 306. Uh, it seems to be what all those are. So we went to the Tacoma Screw. It's a local place that is well known in the Northwest for this kind of stuff. And here's our bag of 200 uh, inch and a quarter size 12 square drive 316 stainless steel screws 200 of them you ready for this hundred and forty eight dollars and fourteen cents so basically 75 cents a screw here's our final video clip on the rub rail project which we can now call complete Remember we started with our teak rub rail. It's kind of hard to see with the lighting and scaffolding here. But here's the new teak, here's the new tainted teak rub rail. All done here. And going on up to the bow. I think it came out very, very nice. So in the end, we spent about a thousand dollars on refurbishing the stainless at Northwest Railmakers that came out really, really nice. We spent about $300 in paint material. The paint we used on this was about uh, $40 to $50 a quart. So all in maybe $13 to $1,400 uh, out. And uh, Rosie and I would estimate about 60 hours of labor, of our labor went into this. So not something we would have hired the yard to do, but it was definitely more labor than uh, we would have thought. But I think the end result was well worth it. And it's Saturday morning and we're here at Seattle Fisheries. The boat remains in Port Townsend. So where we're working on here at Fisheries, I got a new Festool sander that we'll try out next week. They're awesome, though very expensive, frankly. A uh, bunch of more sanding papers and then the six different items needed to do all grip paint um, on the upper deck waterways which we'll start on next week. I'm working on the upper deck sanding around the edges in a pattern through the middle where we're going to have all grip oyster white paint. The fiberglass uh, guys Todd left it at 80 grit then I did 120 then I did 240, now I'm starting a 340, 320 grit, 340 grit along the outer perimeter. And then I think we'll be ready to clean and start masking. For the so Jim, what you doing? Painting this uh, three-part all-grit primer. The co-op originally had about $5,500 to do the upper deck or do the painting of a detailed uh, pattern, tape all that off, and then reverse all that taping and paint a non-skid pattern. Yeah, instead, Rosie and I have taken on most of this project ourselves so we can stay on budget um, and spend our money elsewhere. So it's uh, quite a bit of work, uh, which is why the estimate was what it was. We're using all grip paint this is the same paint as our house in companion ways already painted with in oyster white so we wanted to stick with that besides all the painting experts said it was the most 
difficult, hardest, and expensive to use, and by far the, in their opinion, uh, gave you the best end result. So, what we've done here so far is we've laid out our pattern with all our, it's hard to even see the tape line as the radius curves and stuff, and taped off everywhere where there's not going to be non-skid, but rather the oyster white paint for the entire deck. And we've painted it now with the all grip primer, which is very thin. And so even though you can still see through it a little bit, this is actually five coats of the primer. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna lightly sand it by hand with the 320 and apply the first finished coat of all grip oyster white paint. Yeah, Once the paint dries, we remove all this tape, then we retape the whole thing in reverse, and then the non-skid can be applied. And to do the non-skid, we're gonna do something a little different. We worked with Todd, the fiberglass guy, who's done a great job up here, and he did us a couple test samples, and he's going to apply another coat of gel coat a little bit thicker than normal that leaves the gel coat kind of a stipply finish. Uh, and that is going to be our non-skid versus a painted non-skid. So we'll see how it comes out. First coat of the All Grip Oyster White is in place. All the areas not getting non-skid have now been painted. That paint has cured. We've removed the tape and now we're reversing the tape so we can paint the non-skid. Finish coat is going down. All right, here is our upper deck. It has the final coat down. There's a couple of touch up spots Todd's going to work on, and Jim is masking the edge so that he can caulk the edge so we have a nice clean finish. All right, the gel coat is getting touched up and the caulk is getting prepped. Hey, we're in the conference room here at the Port Townsend Shipwrights Co-op, looking at diagrams of the new superstructure. We have plans. And paravane plane. We're already making a few changes to it, but it's the initial rough plans from our naval architect. This is the best view right here. Yep, front on. What it'll look like front on with pole deployed. And pole not deployed. Yep. Hey, thanks for watching episode five. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we're not gonna have an updated budget right now, but we're currently at about $40,000 on the rebuilding and strengthening of the upper deck, which is uh, about on budget and on time. The reason we don't have an updated budget uh, is that we made some significant changes to the superstructure. We beefed it up quite a bit. We added the a crow's nest up on the top so we could have a bird's eye view and to better navigate coral reefs in the South Pacific. So that's what's uh, coming up in the future. In the next episode, we're going to cover quite a bit. So that episode will be in two weeks and it's going to include a detailed stability analysis by the Naval Architect. Uh, with both the Sea Venture as she sits today without the superstructure, with the new superstructure, without 13 tons of fuel and water, and with 13 tons of fuel and water. So we'll get to go over that. We'll return uh, to Everett. So we'll have our crews back to Everett. We'll uh, finish the salon ceiling installation. We'll install the railings or get started on installing the railings on the new deck. And by that time, we'll have an updated estimate and time frame uh, for the new superstructure. So, until then, wishing you no wind and flat seas. Bye for now.